Hi, Chad and Olive here. We're gonna winterize the camper today. Got two gallons of RV and Marine, uh, Walmart Supertech brand RV antifreeze. We got our LP gas tank recertified for five more years and filled up. And I have the keys to all the cubbies so that I can get in and open everything up for winter, get everything shut off. The first thing we're gonna do is put that LP tank back in this side. Uh, it needed to be recertified and filled up, so we took care of that. I think I've mentioned before I use the tank check system. This has magnets on the bottom of it and sends a signal up through the tank so I know what the LP gas level is at any time. It's on a Bluetooth uh, app on my phone, so it's really helpful and useful when you're camping. So I'll put this on the bottom of the tank before I put the tank in. One thing I've learned is to squeeze this little clamp as you're swiveling this onto the other side so that it stays in place. We'll leave that turned off because we won't need it during the winter. The next thing we're going to do is drain the low point drains. And you can see there's a spot here on the side of our camper that says drain outlet. And then underneath that spot, there are two drains. And these are the low point drains for the hot and cold water system. So I'm going to pull those off now. We'll also pull the cap off of the fresh water tank and let that drain entirely out. We'll try to leave a little bit of water in the fresh water tank during the summer. Just in case we'd have a power outage at home for a few days, we could still use the camper to get showers. But then at the end of the summer, we drain that out. Now, as you can see, we've already emptied their freezer and the refrigerator. And we've got these Dometic clips on it that keep the door open so that it doesn't get moldy in there. If you don't have those, I recommend you get them. What we need to do now is, down in this little panel, is where we have access to the hot water tank. So I recommend everyone have one of these in their camper. It's a Milwaukee Shockwave Toolkit. It's 4832-4401. And it's got a variety of bits for your drill driver. And a lot of the things inside the camper use that little square bit. So it's nice to have that um, in that kit. You can see this little door uses that square bit. Now inside here, we've got the hot water tank and there are some valves. There's a valve at the bottom we want to turn off. A valve at the top that we want to turn off. And then this valve over in the center that's the bypass. So what we've done there is anything we pump through the system now will bypass the hot water heater. We'll be able to drain the hot water heater and then as we pump that RV antifreeze through the system, it'll just go around the hot water heater through the cold and hot water lines. You can see we have some bottles of stuff we want to take in so they don't freeze in the wintertime. Get to be some cold temperatures here in northwest Pennsylvania, so anything that's liquid would freeze. That includes any canned goods, so like if you had canned fruit or anything, you'd want to take those out of your camper for wintertime. But I'm going to turn the faucet cold and hot water on. And that just lets that pull through for that low point drain and pull air through. 
I'll do the same thing. I'll turn the faucet on in the bathroom. You can hear it pull some air through there. What I'm going to do is here in the shower, I'm going to take the sprayer nozzle down and disconnect it. Because I have had a shower spigot break one time because it was still water in it, even though I pump the red antifreeze through. So we'll disconnect that and lay it off to the side. So here's that sprayer disconnected and just lay it up on top of the shelf. That also allows this hose to pull through there so that as I pump the pink fluid through, it just goes straight down into the drain when I pump that pink fluid through rather than spraying all over the base of the shower. You can see I've turned the faucets back off now. We'll do the same thing in the kitchen here. Because when I start pumping that red fluid through, I want it to go to the furthest point first, which is actually the outside kitchen. The next thing I'm gonna do requires a 15th, 16th wrench. And here inside the hot water tank, we wanna pull this hot water drain. Once you get it loosened up, you just gotta turn it by hand. Now, if you haven't emptied those low point drain points, this will come shooting out of here with a lot of pressure. So you always wanna make sure you've done your drain points first. And stand back because it has that six gallons of water drains, it just goes gravity fed onto the ground right below the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and put these caps back on the low point drains. That's done draining now. The hot water tank is still draining. You can see it draining out over there. Like I said, you want to have your keys. I'm going to open up the outside kitchen here. If you have an outside refrigerator, you want to make sure it's propped open also. Here's our outside kitchen sink. So we will start pumping into here first. And you can see I do have the power hooked up. I leave the 110 volt connected all winter long. We do have a battery shut off inside the camper, but we leave it on so that the battery can trickle charge throughout the winter. And we're gonna set this up. See where it says city water hookup winterize, both knobs are up and down. So we're gonna do that. And then our camper has this hose with it that lets you put the winterization bottle right in to do the winterization without having to pump through. It uses the pump system of the camper. So you just remove that little knob. Connect this line. What I've found is if you do this just right, you can get the hose down in the bottle and put the bottle inside this little doorway. And that way no one has to be out here holding it. The hose isn't quite long enough to reach the ground, but this works good because now I can go around to the different faucets, run them until the pink water comes through, and it'll take more than one gallon for this camper. The hot water tank is done draining, so I'm going to put this cap back in here. Now just finger tighten it for now. I'll tighten it back up in the spring. Close this door. Now to pump the pink water through, I need to turn the water pump on. You can hear it start pumping from that bottle. And that's filling the lines with that pink antifreeze. 
this rear kitchen is the furthest point from the water pickup. So we're going to run the pink water here first. I'll start with the cold. And we'll run water until we see it comes out pink. Okay. Now we'll do the same with the hot water. Now that pink is left over from the line, so it'll change back to clear, pumping through the hot water lines. And now we're at pink. So you can see just getting back to the rear kitchen and pumping through those lines has used quite a bit of that first jug. So I'll have the second jug here ready, but for now I'll try to use the rest of that up by going into the inside kitchen and pumping through there, seeing if there's enough left in that jug to get pink through at least one of the cold or hot water lines. So we'll try the cold water line here. So we're already pink because the water had to come past here to get to the outside kitchen. Now we'll do the hot water line. Now remember that's left over from the line. Changes back to clear. And then we should see it go back to pink. If there's enough pink water left in the bottle. I like to let it run a little bit so that some of the pink water goes into the drain system also and then sits in the bottom of the gray water tank. So this jug's almost empty. I'm going to replace it with the other one to do the toilet, the bathroom sink, and the shower. And I'll be able to pour the rest of this into this jug once we pull some from it. Or I might just dump this down the toilet or down one of the sinks to get into the tanks. So now I'm going to do the bathroom sink. And with the tank, with the jug turned that way, you'll be able to see it pooling directly from that jug to do the bathroom sink and the shower. I'll do the same way I'll do the cold water and then the hot water. It'll run clear and then pink. Now the last one I want to do is this outside shower. I forgot to do it one year and everything inside here broke from freezing up. We don't even use this. You see it really needs cleaned out. But I will just turn on the spigot enough to spray some pink water out of here. Pink on cold. Remember in spring to give that a good clean out. Now there's not much left in this bottle so you can see it takes just about a full two gallons for this camper. And I'm going to use the rest of this to dump down the drains and the toilet and the sinks. But now that I've done all the locations I can remove this line which is a tremendous thing to have. I've had campers before where you had to disconnect Get in underneath the seats of the cushions of the of the dinette, disconnect wires and lines. I've had ones where you had to manually pump through the pump system to get the water through the line. This is so much 
easier and a better system, much more user friendly. Put that little cap back on, close this up. Now we keep this underneath the bed of the camper just so I always know where it is. But like I said, I'm gonna take these in and dump them in. So I gathered up all my tools to take back in the house with me. We'll throw these jugs away. But uh, a simple, easy process winterizing this camper. Like I said, I've had other campers where it's much more difficult. This system works really well. I remembered to turn the pump off, which is important. I put the cap back on that fresh water tank drain. So everything's closed up for winter. I just need to get some of those uh, hand soaps and the other fluids out of the camper and store them in the basement for winter time so they don't freeze inside the camper. If you like videos like this, click that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And we'll see you the next time. Olive loves to go camp and she's not sure why I was spending so much time in the camper doing that winterizing. Unfortunately, no more camping this year. We'll go into spring. Good girl. Jennifer's decided she wants a fire ring from Rural King instead of making one out of Barnstone. So I'm going to use the tractor to get the hitch out of the truck so we can go pick up that new fire ring kit. Now this hitch is held into the rails by a couple pins, four pins. So what I usually do is I take the pins out and then I store them up here. Put the cotter pin back through like that. So I'll take the other three out and then I'll be able to lift this hitch up out of the bed of the truck. So you can see the hitch sits down in those rails, that's where the pins went through. I've lifted it off the rail. I've got the tractor here with the bucket, so I'm just gonna slide the hitch back into the bucket. Hitch is in the bucket, I'll be able to just curl the bucket back and then haul the hitch into the garage where I store it for the winter time. So the disadvantage to that fifth wheel hitch system is that those rails always stay in the bed.